Slimehouse TV, myself Theo Kane, and today I'm going to be switching things up a little bit and trying something different. I'm going to be doing an episode that's just all about drawing. I've never done an episode like this before, so for this very first one, I'm going to be drawing a character from a game that I've been playing a lot of recently, and it's Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. Also, make sure that you stick around, because at the end of the video, I'm going to let you lot know how you can win a copy of today's artwork signed by me, posted to your house completely free, so make sure you stick around at the end for that bit. Without further ado, let's crack on with some drawing. So I'm going to start this drawing the same way that I start all my drawings and it's not without too much planning, trying to get a form down, just trying to get something down that looks remotely like what I've got in my head. I want to draw her from the side, I'm going to draw her like this with the bow and arrow outstretched like she's about to take down a giant machine. So it's going to be a nice side angle. Something about me as well is I don't look at reference very rarely so I, I, I have to trial and error sometimes. But I think at some point I'll have to look at a picture of someone actually firing a bow and arrow just to make sure that I've got it right. I want it to look like she's really pulling back the cord and she's really firing this fucking arrow at a machine. And it, like if she lets go, it's just going to fly. I want to have her legs down here. Maybe she's going to be crouched in some kind of grass eventually. If you've played the game, you know that uh, you do all your stealthy hiding stuff in long grass so just a little bit about this game um i was very late to the party i'm very late to the party on this game i saw it at e3 when it originally got um, announced that they were making this game but to be honest i can't ever do much gaming i never really have time to do much gaming even though i love it and that's one of the reasons why i don't have time because if i do start playing a game i get so obsessed and i don't get any work done and there'd be no slime house videos so it took me a while to actually play Horizon, but I've just completed it. I just did Into the Frozen Wilds. I loved it. It took me a few days to get into the game, to really get into it. But then after a couple of days, I was obsessed with this game. And I love this character, Aloy. I think she's awesome. I think she's got a really good look. So I wanted to do my own little drawing of her. I'm thinking that this hand here, the one that's pulling back the cord, is, is too far back. I'm very pretty much sure that it's too far back. But I'll just carry on and then eventually I'll look at some reference and we'll just see whereabouts the um, whereabouts the bow's supposed to be. So yeah, as I was saying, I think at the start of this video, I don't like to use reference. I, I, I use reference as, as little as possible. Not because I've got anything against using reference, but I, I like to not have to rely on it. I want to be able to draw things without looking at reference. So even if I have to trial and error and draw things a few times, by me drawing it a few times, it means that when it comes to drawing it again, or the second, or the third time, the fourth, the fifth, whatever, I, I, do, I, I know it then, it's in my head, and I, I won't ever need to look at reference again. So I try to look at reference as little as possible. This also goes for her outfit, but I'll talk about that when we get to the outfit part. So as you can see now, I've made my initial sketch transparent, and I'm going over that with a with a darker with a darker black now. And you can see her hands look really blocky. Well, one thing about my sketching out is it's always so blocky and rough. Start drawing some fingers. One thing about when you're drawing fingers, when they're holding something, you never draw them like a fist and then draw the item in it, uh, the object or the prop or the weapon or whatever. I find it's best to draw the weapon and then draw the hand wrapped around it. Because if it's like that, it's like a fist. But if it's holding something like this, you see there's a gap there. So it's always best to draw the can and then draw the hand around the can. That's what I think personally. Speaking of cans, have a little bit of monster because I'm tired today. I was up late working on a, on a commission. If you're new to the channel anyway, my name's Theo Kane and this is Slimehouse TV, a creative space where we cover everything cool, artistic, retro and edgy. But I've never done much drawing on here. So the last video that I uploaded was a documentary about an old toy line called the Z-Bots and at the end of the video I drew a picture and it had a pretty good response so I thought well I might do a bit more of that in the uh, in the videos. I might try and do some more arty videos where it's less scripted, less flashy editing and it's literally just me sat here drawing with the iPad just cracking on. Not cracking off which is a very different thing.
So let's have a look on Google. I want I want to look how uh, how a, someone would pull back an arch pull back a bow and arrow in archery. Let's have a look. Images. This guy's nice from the side. Yeah, so she would have it here, more next to the chin rather than back there, which makes no sense because who fires a bow like that? Idiot. I don't know what I was thinking. So yeah, it wants to be more like that. So a, a very quick glimpse at a reference picture, just trying to get it right. Because I've fired bow and arrows before, but I never paid attention to how my stance was. So I'll bring this hand down a little bit. So she's not like... At the minute, she's like this. She's got one hand here and one hand two eyes. So I'll bring that one down. Bring this one more to her chin. And then that way, you'll start looking a lot better. Yeah, now we've got it right. Check that. That looks nice. So I'm going to start sketching this outfit on her in red. Just building up the shapes. Just building up the form. And I, I, I'm, I know vaguely what her outfit looks like. So I'm just going to do it from memory. And then that way it won't be exactly the same. It'll be my own version of the outfit. It's hard to draw and talk at the same time and concentrate on it. Oh, so I'm not one of these artists that can just like blast something out with no with no um, trial and error. Like I have to sketch lots out. Like it's very it's very rare that a picture comes together straight away how I want it to. I have to do a lot of messing about back and forth to get it right. So if you look at this outfit now that I've drawn, it, it starts to resemble the kind of thing that she has. She's got the beads around the neck. She's got like a, a, a tight bit on the midriff, but then this bit's baggy. She's got a kind of skirt going on. She's got the quill there where the arrows will go. She's got the armor on the wrists. So what I'm going to do now is my fourth layer, and I'm going to uh, go over the red now with a fine black and start sketching out the, the, the proper lines that we're going to be using on the picture. And sketch them out in this nice fine black. This is called the technical pen on Procreate. I use this for most of my outlining. Sometimes I use like the more pencil-y looking ones, but this is just my favourite. I love this brush. And I'm going to have it with lots of layers of leather and cloth and fabric all folding and overlapping. She's got a little pouch here, like a little, little satchel. She's got lots of pockets and stuff like that on her belt. Bits of things she's salvaged, bits of things she's made. So I've coloured a lot of the actual body part of the image in grey, just so I can start uh, seeing what's what, because it starts getting a bit confusing. And did a little bit of highlighting and toning, just so I can see if it's working, then it looks like it is. Now I'm going to be doing this necklace, of these like beads that she has around the neck. If I were doing this on paper, I'd have to use circle tools for everything. And if one of them was wrong, I'd have to be rubbing out one little certain part and redrawing it. You don't have to. It's another thing I really like about digital art. It's very, um, it's, it's very time efficient. That whole like work smarter, not harder kind of thing. It's real good for that kind of stuff. Underneath a bead, she has like a, a neckerchief, like a scarf hanging, which I just remembered. So I'm having to draw that now over the top of the bead and then cut around it so it looks like it's underneath. This is all stuff that if I was looking at a picture, I would have recognised before, but I, I, I don't look at pictures, do I? That's my that's that's my blessing and my curse. You get good at drawing stuff without looking at things, but you also have to draw stuff over and over again or draw stuff over the top and cut it out to look like it's underneath because you didn't look at an image. I just glimpsed at a picture of her outfit just to see how the neckerchief was. <laughs> and we're just like, yeah. I'm going to have to put that underneath now. So we can, uh, again, it starts getting confusing. You've got layers of fabric, beads hanging. You've got a hand in front. You've got armor. This is when stuff starts getting a little bit confusing. So it just helps to block stuff out in colors. Cool. This hand's looking nice. This is going to be the hand that's holding the bow. I'm happy how that's looking. Again, the bow, I'm just making it up from scratch. The, the bows in the game, there's so many different ones. They're all so fucking cool and really unique looking with feathers on them and that kind of thing and machine parts strapped to them and things. So I'm just making my own up, making up my own version. See, this is kind of like a, a cross between like a tribute art, fan art piece and like a concept art for it, for its, for its own outfit and, and weapon design. And it's just nice to draw things in your own style and not have to... Uh, not, not have to feel like you're copying something exact which is why i'll never copy a picture i'll always draw something from my own angle in my own way 
So just getting, just sketching the face out. I, I will do this face again because I, I, it always takes me a couple of attempts to get the face to look how I want it to. I mean, I'm trying to make it look a bit like Aloy. I don't want it to, it doesn't have to look exactly like Aloy, but I want it to be recognisable. Other than the outfit, I want you to be able to see it and go, yeah, that's Aloy, Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. So just trying to get it to look right. I, I have a tendency to make things look ugly and fierce and mean, and you don't want that with Aloy. She's a, she's got like a, she's got like a, a real, pretty angelic face. So I don't want to do any features that's too sharp. This hair's looking wicked. I'm liking this hair. Hair's one of them things that's either really fun to do or it's a fucking chore. But in in the case of this picture, it's, it's coming together all right. I've drawn way too much hair. She looks like a big fucking predator, but. I like drawing hair. It's my own version. If if it's got too much hair and it, there's a bit too much there, it is what it is. It's my it's my version of the character. When you're doing commissions and things like that, you have to quite often stick to like a real specific brief. But when you're just drawing a picture for yourself, you can really have fun with it. So I always like to draw lots of pictures for myself. It's another reason why I want to do more of these videos. If you like this video, please give it a like. Comment below what you'd like to see me draw next time, and subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna try and do more of these. I want to switch it up on the channel so it's not just toy stuff all the time. So it's got other cool stuff dropping on there. So I've been trying to do the, like more of the podcasts and interviews and stuff like that. It's been hard with lockdown, but it's been easy trying to lock people in for the podcast during lockdown because they're all at home. So I'm starting to colour her hair in now. Just started to block out a little bit of the colour. If you notice, I always work in grey tones to begin with, and then I shade the grey tones. Most of the time, I shade the grey tones and then colour over them. In this particular case, I'm just doing a bit of a mix. For a hair here, I'm just going straight in with the colour. So now she's really starting to take form. I keep saying that. She's really starting to take form, but, she, but like at this point when we've got the colour in and they, pretty much the whole picture's drawn out, it really is starting to take form. Shading a hair like this, this is mega fun. You can start giving the hair, hair some real depth. Make it look real thick. Ah! <coughs> Fucking warm monster. Right. I want to eat. <laughs> Gangster rap. Mm -mm. Okay, now I've had some food in the system. It's looking all right. Let's get this bowl coloured in. So this bowl's looking all right. And then I've pretty much got all the main image there and I can start doing the nice stuff like the, the highlighting and the, the, the final pass. Doing some lots of little fine highlights. Do you know one of the things I did wrong as well? I worked from an A4 piece on this picture, so if you really zoom in, it starts to pixelate, but it, it's fine because it's it's not for anything. It's just for this video. I've done a like way more kind of like eye makeup and mascara kind of stuff than Aloy has in the game, but I, I suppose I, I've just gone for that like Lagatha from Vikings kind of look where they have like a lot of black war paint in the eye. This is one of my favorite bits to do now. I start adding like splatty mud and texture effects. Because she's running around in forests and wastelands, uh, running, rolling around fighting machines. She's going to be splattered in mud, bits of cuts on her and a bit of blood and stuff like that. Because she's been shooting people and getting shot at. So she's going to be scuffed and scarred and marked. This is one of my favourite things to do at the end of the picture. Bit on the bow. So the bow looks like she's had it a long time. And there we have it, finished. The big reveal. 
There's my version of Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. I could keep tinkering with it, but the thing with art is you can keep going back forever and fucking about with little bits and bats like that. And I've decided, no, I'm going to leave it. That's it. That's a nice finished piece. Took about four hours, give or take. I know we stopped for a bit while I made a gangster rap, but yeah, about four hours all in. Just talk you through a few of the little elements in it. So the beads round her neck, I had a quick look at the picture of the beads in the story, and they're not perfectly round. They are like more chiseled, so I went back and I redid the beads. She's got the focus wheel on the face with a little pink glow, just highlighting the little eye socket there. And then the arrow decided to go for a flaming arrow, which wasn't my uh, initial plan or anything like that. But when I when I was coming towards the end, I thought, yeah, man, I'll, I'll get a flaming arrow in there because you have them in the game so that that makes perfect sense and like i said i wanted to have a st uh, knell in some grass with wind and sleet and shit blowing at us so I, I think it came out all right i think it came out all right there's my my tribute to a fucking awesome game and an awesome character there I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to be in with a chance to win a free print of today's drawing, then all you've got to do is make sure that you subscribe to the channel and you leave a comment below letting me know a suggestion on what you think I should be drawing next time. I'm going to announce three winners at the end of the next video, so good luck, one love, and I'll catch you next time on Slimehouse TV.